Nvidia introduced tessellation. This was back in 2005. Now this feature basically ran so much better on Nvidia GPUs and it did look a lot better in games. If you want an example of what tessellation is, we still use it today. You can see that the, the rocks and stuff, they're kind of getting like displaced, just adds like displacement, like a, a Y value to textures in a game. So it allows them to get this like 3D level of detail without nearly as much processing power as actually would be all the polygons that would make up these rocks. Crisis 2, tessellation was a thing at this time and it seemed like, I'm not even 100% sure, but I think Nvidia worked with the developer of this game. In order to make the game run better artificially on Nvidia GPUs, they would be hiding tessellation objects within the ground that may or may not actually be used, I'm not sure, or is left over. And these would make the game have to render these objects, and that would mean that games would run a lot better on Nvidia GPUs, whether this was intentional or not, 11 years ago. Or, that's 2011, that's... Jeez, that's gonna be coming up on 14 years ago now. Holy shit, I'm getting old. Yeah, this isn't the only thing that Nvidia has introduced that's exclusive to their GPUs. If you take a look here, Nvidia Phys X. You guys might notice this whenever you download Nvidia drivers or something for your GPU, like Phys X. What the hell is Phys X? And I've never seen this used in a game. But basically this was like a graphics physics system developers could put in their games. But the last time this was updated was 2019 from what I can tell, but it did introduce some pretty cool stuff. Like you can see here, they're, they're putting some suspicious white liquid all over a rabbit. This is a really weird introduction to this because a lot of the stuff is like fluid simulations. Say here, this bowl of Fruit Loops. Scene shows two way coupling of cereal represented by rigid like, bodies. This is a, a weird way to introduce the system, but they rise to the surface. why does this look so gross? But if you do look at games like, you know, Witcher 3, this is one of the big games that use NVIDIA Hairworks. It is also PhysX. It's part of PhysX. Gameworks is a, was a huge part of NVIDIA that they're trying to introduce for game developers. And this introduced like hair simulation in the game. So you can see here on the left that this is not using any kind of hair simulation or it, it does, but it's like not nearly as detailed as what NVIDIA Hairworks could do on the right side here. You know, say here in Far Cry 4 as well, pretty old games now at this point, but you can see on the left side, this this cheetah looks like just a plastic doll on the left. On the right side, it actually has hair. Now, whether or not the devs could have, you know, done better on the left side is questionable, but that can be what leads part of the things with these NVIDIA exclusive features is it kind of gives a shortcut for developers that they don't have to always work as hard, which can be a good and a bad thing, but it means NVIDIA GPUs will look better than AMD or Intel ones, I guess at this point. And then there's this, ray tracing. NVIDIA introduced ray tracing in 2018 with their RTX GPUs, massive thing. I think we just hop into Cyberpunk to check this out. The last point I saved my game, I was in this like little tunnel thing here. But right now we don't have ray tracing on in the game. You can see up in the left corner of the screen, we're on the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is an $800 GPU. We'll see soon if that will, will remain at that price after new GPUs launch. As you can see in the game, we're getting like 60 FPS in here-ish on high settings at 4K native at the moment. So this is pretty demanding as it is, but no ray tracing is on to speak of at all. Let's just turn on a ray trace reflections in the game. Remember we're on an NVIDIA GPU and this is NVIDIA's third generation of ray tracing. So you would think that it could handle this pretty well. It's not terrible, but we did definitely lose about 30% of our FPS. We're down to 40 FPS now at 4K. Pretty dramatic drop in FPS. And if we wanna go anything higher than this, turn on sun shadows, loco shadows, and ray trace lighting, you know, up to ultra. This is basically ray tracing ultra preset in the game. Now we drop down to 20 FPS. And yes, I do have motion blur on, so it doesn't look as choppy as it would be. Actually, let's go ahead and turn off motion blur so you can see how choppy the game actually does look. Yeah, it's not, Exactly pretty. I apologize for the area being so uh, dimly lit. I can't leave. Yeah, you can see that we got ray tracing on and everything. Now it does lead to some pretty cool advantages. Like if we come in here and on the water, we should see some reflections. So I'm not even 100% sure if those are new reflections with the ray tracing, but that's kind of cool. We have ray trace lighting on, so it's actually reflecting the lights around the room and all that kind of stuff and filling the lighting gaps. And what we can do is turn off all the ray tracing, okay? Oh, I can just go like off toggle. We'll actually probably see a little bit of a difference here with the lighting. Now I actually notice the FPS that feels so much better to play. Yeah, the ray trace lighting looks, uh, I guess a little bit more realistic. It's really not a 
massive difference if i'm being honest if you're pixel peeping i'm sure it looks great guys i'm sure if you're digital foundry it looks great the thing is though is nvidia has introduced certain things like it's not just the ray tracing but they've introduced path tracing okay so path tracing is where every effect in the game is essentially ray traced and if you want to see here on this 800 dollars gpu at 4k yes it is 4k so it's very high resolution but yeah we're only getting like 13 fps this is above the ambition that NVIDIA wanted to do in 2018 when they first introduced ray tracing. But at the same time, we all know this is where we wanted this to go. Ray tracing should simulate all the lighting and effects in the game to make basically what would be real world in the game. Like imagine combining NVIDIA's like very cohesive physics system in games along with path tracing. And then all of a sudden you basically have a simulation of real life. I mean, that's cool, but it runs like shit. So until it can run well, well, yeah. And that's why even back in 2018, NVIDIA introduced DLSS, Super Resolution. Now this allows you to upscale games to allow ray tracing to run a little bit better. I just turned it on DLSS quality and now we're basically rendering out from 1440p and then going up to 4K. Our FPS just about doubled by using some upscaling in this case. And to my eyes, it looks genuinely quite good, okay? And uh, if we want to get some more FPS, we could use even more upscaling. Get on to performance, which is basically upscaling from 1080p up to 4K. And at that point, the game actually surprisingly isn't terrible. All right. The, the game does look quite cool with all the path tracing on. Like the, the lighting looks quite realistic in my opinion. But there's a lot of issues that come with path tracing heavily relying on DLSS. And this is encouraging developers to want to use DLSS or rely on upscaling for their own games to make their games run better. And this can lead to excuses and optimization for a lot of games. You guys have probably seen Threat Interactive that's made so many really, really good videos on this. Using upscaling is leading to obviously bad performance on like unreasonable performance in games and has its own issues on its own, especially if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU that can take advantage of DLSS because DLSS is great. I love DLSS. It is a great technology, but that doesn't mean that it's not hurting the games industry or the PC gaming market in general. This is just another feature that makes people get locked into NVIDIA GPUs. It doesn't even end here. Ray tracing and DLSS here. NVIDIA has also introduced DLSS Ray Reconstruction. Okay, so this might actually improve our performance a little bit more. We're going to check this out. We were at 40 FPS before. No, we're actually about the same. So it's still 40 FPS. But what DLSS ray reconstruction does is make the ray tracing in games look better. It's not only that they have the best performance, but they also have the best ray tracing visuals too. NVIDIA is always making features that lock down to their GPUs and I don't blame them. It's a good business strategy. These other companies have to keep chasing what NVIDIA keeps doing. Ray reconstruction, it does look great. And you can see this in Alan Wake 2 from Digital Foundry here. Like, But at least one benefit is that this seems to have really heavy integration for developers of games. And it doesn't seem like every developer out there is like clamoring to put this in their game because we've only seen this in, I think, two games up to this point. But at the same time, though, if this does become bigger in the future and ray reconstruction ends up being standard, games will genuinely just look better and run better on NVIDIA GPUs. This looks really weird. Am I crazy? I think the water effect is actually transferring to my character's thumb on the bottom left. Despite all of the scummy business practices and everything, people are still buying NVIDIA GPUs, and I think this is one of the main reasons for that is because they lock so many features to them. And coming up with the next generation of GPUs coming soon. Now, this is actually going to be announced tomorrow. You can actually see NVIDIA's keynote at CES at 6.30 p.m. PT time. Now, I'm actually gonna be live streaming this if you wanna join me with it and react to the live event. I don't know exactly what's coming, but we have some ideas. Obviously, tons of leaks have come out. Should be a fun time. We'll see uh, what NVIDIA pulls out of their hat here. Right here, you can see that January 21st, at this point, seems to be a rumored release date for the RTX 5080. And we can see even more things, like MSI has leaked a box design for the 5080, so that's interesting. And actually, my GOAT, my GOAT, Yestin, has uh, has actually leaked or said that their new GPUs are coming. For this, as you can see on Twitter, they posted Yestin, you know, the anime waifu graphics card brand. Let, let me get one of mine. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, baby. The Yestin graphics card. Come on, don't you want that? Her eyes are a little bit 
they're not aligned, but <laughs> this was their older car. This was their 2018 model. You can't blame them as their first rodeo. But besides this, this is making me actually want to get a, a 50 series GPU, if that is the case here. This might actually be a 50 series GPU. We've seen it leak in a photo i forget what company this was that actually showed this nvidia nvidia geforce garage so this is their own thing and they actually had a little disclaimer that one is secretive so is this actually what a 50 series graphics card is going to look like we're, we're not 100 percent sure and these are the specs up to this point i've made a huge video going over the specs if you want to check that out but we will be figuring out probably a good chunk of this stuff tomorrow so you could just you know, join me for that live stream. All the specs here, obviously 50 series is gonna be a decent jump up, but we're not really sure on the price. But what makes me even more worried than the price is actually what is Nvidia going to do for this generation to have help them set apart from other ones. I didn't even show you too, like, you know, Cyberpunk, for example, and this has been pretty widespread in games. There's DLSS 3 frame generation. And frame generation was only available in RTX 40 series graphics cards, which again was holding frame generation to NVIDIA products. Now, AMD has actually made frame generation very accessible and it looks very good on every GPU brand out there now. So NVIDIA was artificially limiting that and that kind of went to bite them in the ass. We're actually seeing rumors and leaks up to this point in time that DLSS 4 exists. This is a listing that was leaked about a 5080, a European website. What is this going to be? Is this going to be another way of NVIDIA of locking things to NVIDIA GPUs and making games look better on their GPUs and forcing almost developers to keep making games for NVIDIA GPUs. This basically corners the market for NVIDIA. Again, I, I don't blame them. This is a smart strategy. They might eventually get busted for like antitrust kind of stuff. As there is a leak, Inno3D did, which is a AIB partner for NVIDIA. Here that was on their website briefly before it got taken down. It says neural rendering capabilities, revolutionizing how graphics are processed and displayed. And they also mentioned here advanced DLSS technology. So again, DLSS Four is probably what we're expecting here. We'll see if that does come to pass. But there's a lot of speculation is like, what does this neural rendering capabilities mean? Kind of up in the air at this point, but at the same time, I have some ideas. I think some of the big things is Nvidia has been talking about this before, and this has been the texture compression in their, their games. Basically, and this would help Nvidia actually avoid all of their VRAM problems on their GPUs because textures take up a lot of VRAM. Textures take up a lot of space so what developers do is they compress the textures and there's a way to basically combine all of the the compression techniques that are for these textures up to this point in time and using neural rendering to basically bring back that detail and you can see here with this demonstration that they've shown one side of this is the neural technique and it looks basically identical to what the movie model for the object is this would just be one way of nvidia using neural rendering to genuinely make games look better on their gpus much more ideas that i'm not even 100 percent sure of at this point one of the ideas that i had and i don't know if this will come to pass but with nvidia's frame generation i was wondering if they're going to accelerate frame generation on their cards better because up to this point in time like you would think it'd give you two times the frames but it doesn't end up coming out to that most of the time it ends up being like 40 to 50 percent more frames a lot of the time i was wondering if they're gonna fix that with 50 series i don't know if they're prioritizing frame generation either since amd has really actually done quite well with this and then speaking of amd obviously they can make some decent stuff but amd's market share has been dwindling they're actually going down despite all of the hype that is for amd graphics cards this strategy from video has been working and AMD just seems to always have to be catching up. They're always playing catch up to Nvidia and they always seem to fumble every opportunity that is given to them. <laughs> but AMD is also doing an upcoming generation of GPUs at CES. From all the leaks that we've seen so far, this will be tomorrow as well. I'm going to I'm going to be streaming this. This is going to be a little bit earlier in the day. The Nvidia one's like pretty late at night for me. From all the rumors, has been the 9070 XT. AMD with this generation of GPUs, it's basically confirmed up to this point that they've been targeting much better ray tracing performance and also FSR 4 with AI upscaling, kind of like DLSS. But you can see that AMD is just playing catch up. AMD is just getting faster ray tracing. AMD is just getting AI upscaling, even though they really should have done that since the start. There are some other things like the 9070 XT looks like it's going to be 
pretty good. I'm not even 100% sure. I, I haven't done a deep dive into this, but I'm sure I'll find out quite a bit more tomorrow if it is introduced tomorrow. But what I think is hilarious is the name of the GPU. It's called the 9070 XT now. Now, if you know anything like the Yeston graphics card I, I have right here, this is called the 5700 XT. This is in 2018 that this was introduced. So this was 5000 series, and then we've seen 6000, and the last generation was 7000 series graphics cards. AMD has been sticking to that, but they've been calling them you know, 57, you know, 7900 XT or, or something like that. AMD is now copying NVIDIA's naming scheme with having, you know, the a zero there, and then having the number indicating the skew of the graphics card more towards the end. And it just seems like AMD's ripping off of NVIDIA, trying to always constantly play catch up. It's crazy. They just feel like the off-brand version of NVIDIA that can't do as much, which maybe that's what it is. Well, we've talked about the duopoly for quite a while. Like AMD doesn't really actually care because they make all their gaming revenue on consoles anyways. Who knows? Maybe they do this on purpose and make themselves look kind of stupid. But at the end of the day, if the product is good, the product is good. And why AMD is playing catch up, NVIDIA is going to start introducing new features. I don't think they'll ever actually catch up. And it seems like people genuinely care about these features because NVIDIA is more dominant in the GPU space, even on gaming, despite all of the problems that their GPUs have with pricing and everything. They're more dominant than they've ever been before. Now, Intel has recently introduced the ARC B580, which has been a pretty cool graphics card with a lot of different features and everything with XCSS. I really like that they've been specking into things that seem more future oriented and that's good, but Intel is still not there yet. And I don't think that they'll outpace Nvidia. This is how Nvidia likes to stay on top. And we're gonna see, especially with this neural rendering type stuff, probably gonna be announced tomorrow or today whenever you're seeing this video you're probably seeing it today i think is it's kind of gross but i don't blame nvidia for taking this strategy it's smart join me for the stream tomorrow and i'm hoping we get good news from nvidia also amd intel might introduce something i don't really know all right i'll see you guys in the next video see you tomorrow actually if you join the stream all right peace have fun